hovering in that top eight, top six range, but never quite made that top cut. And uh, now they'll, this is where they're looking to get their chance to be banned from all Arcadians. Woo! Now's the time. Uh, yet another uh, New York Toon Link. There appears to be a lot of these, which honestly, don't hate. Toon Link is an extremely slept on character in so many regards. And the fact that they, the fact that there is still a presence for this, their metagame is uh, very, very nice, particularly against the Byleth matchup because, I mean, Toon Link is surprisingly quick, but also surprisingly oh light. Gotta be careful. Uh, that's a look at that F tilt. Has the edge guard gonna go? Oh, there it is. I love that because normally characters can struggle to deal with Toon Link. You know. Oh, you did. Yeah, you did. Did. Um, just uh, just a little snipe. Yeah, no, the edge guard's coming in from both players. Really cool to see. Uh, yeah, that up B doesn't combo. This ain't that kind of young Link. Uh, no, but it is, he is still a... Oh, okay, that side B was so clean. Seeing the potential coverage and reading the air dodge there. Okay, Goober's starting to put on a little bit of a string of their own. I like the intended focus on coverage, but that parry from Mailman Man, it's going to instantly reverse the tide and potentially land a killing blow here. Instead, respecting that space and finding ourselves yeah. back at neutral here, Salty. Yeah, honestly, we've been seeing a ton of neutral. Great job getting the pickup right there. But a ton of neutral because I feel like both these players have now realized, oh, when I mess up, my opponent will take me for a ride. And they're respecting each other for that reason. Like, knowing that they can own... Like, he's not just running in blindly with a neutral there. Instead, he's taking space ever so gently and then rushing in with that kind of move. Yeah, being very, very particular, but one of the big difference makers for a like a ranged, like zoning type character as uh, oh. as Byleth is just that neutral air. Like, uh, I swear, Mailman, if there's one thing you learn, like watch these back. You're set against Maniac and this one as well. Stop it with those. They are not good. <laughs> like what, if you're the neutral air, get no, some no. help. No, no, no. The Drop from ledge, double jump, fully onto stage, and aerial side B. Oh. Like, if you're doing aerial side B, you can be doing fair and be infinitely safer. Not like, Or you stall at ledge and you re-grab ledge with the aerial side B. Do not, don't mix the two. <laughs> Those wires shouldn't be crossed. <laughs> I guess he's trying to not fail right there. I just, I've never heard him shout that. Fail not? It's the name of the bow. I, I'm aware. Okay. I, don't, I feel like he doesn't shout it every time. He's not a no. Pokemon. No, yeah. They, it's random. <laughs> it's a mix between like just a normal like battle cry and the uh, the name of the weapon. Though, I don't know. <laughs> Spooky had really had the read there, but man, getting hit by the inside hit of that down tilt. I wonder what, uh, what Goober was looking for in that instance since it was a very particular I think he spacing. Was, I, well, the thing is, I think he was just expecting, like, a defensive option. You know, oh. he, like, ran in right here. He just ran in, was expecting him oh, to maybe to then, yeah. dash back or just hold shield or something like that. But we had the quick turnaround, that bit of aggression where uh, the down tilt leads into it. And there were two kills, I believe, with that down tilt. Yes, so, such a perfect confirm. And the up air is so, not only super disjointed, but mm -hmm. super strong as well. So that town and city's high ceiling doesn't even matter. And I feel like Toon Link is, like, how do characters normally deal with that down tilt? That's by jumping over it. You yes. know, that down tilt kind of leaves this blind spot of, di like, directly, diagonally above Byleth. Um, but Toon Link doesn't necessarily want to be in that range. I mean, I guess yeah. he can throw out Boomerang there, but landing right. with aerials, is, that's kind of not exactly where he wants to be, it feels like. Yeah, it, the, especially given the uh, Boomerang, the strong hit Boomerang that they wanted to land was um, much more horizontal to that, though. Uh, and so that way you can land strong hit boomerang and then get like a full like run jump fair to yeah. combo off of it. Or I mean, like, I think just in general, Toon Link doesn't Nair have a lot of. He doesn't land with aerials on an opponent's shield that much. No, I'm like Nair. <gasps> Whoa! You gonna do what? You gonna do what now? Excuse me. Where did this come from? Like, um. Uh, good luck not getting hit by down tilt now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Kirby's gonna. Kirby necessarily, like, as mandatorily, plays super grounded, and it works because they're so short. But 
this is working. This is working so far. We are in a ledge trap with Kirby. It's working nah. because he had him trapped in the corner. But Low what damage. happens when that is on the other foot? Oh boy. Low we damage have a always works. Don't worry. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's all. It's all just an illusion. <laughs> We have the devil in our ear screaming about no, how I'm, bad. I'm, oh, we're, you're live? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. this character's trash. Okay. <laughs> Bottom one. <laughs> oh, man. How do you just listen? Kirby's in top eight of a tournament. I don't yeah, know what you're talking about. It's the Rugrats tournament. Get out of here. <laughs> the Rugrats tournament. Oh, no. Not like oh. this. That back here huge, though. I it's, feel I'm like it didn't kill. What? Oh, you, go, yeah, oh, you, you hit him? Down angled forward toe on the regrab. Very nice stuff. Was it the regrab? I thought that was like some hurt box extension nonsense. Uh, also plausible. We'll have to get the replay. Yeah, I'm we'll pretty sure it was a regrab, later. though. Either way, down angled forward tilts are so, like unbelievably slept on in terms of both two framing and the options to hit ledge if yours does so. As I mean, I know Kirby. The uh, Kirby being slow in the air is like the thing that really shuts down the character. But you can't sleep on that ground speed, which is far from terrible. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Does Furby... Does Furby... This, <laughs> Fur Kirby, this Furby going in, bro. <laughs> but does Kirby say fail not when he gets... Uh, uh, when he has the bow? Uh, I think fail not is only said during neutral air, not during the bow pull. No? No, I'm not saying no because it's untrue. I'm saying no because I wanted to hear, hear Kirby do a high-pitched fail not. <laughs> Respectable as uh, uh, yet another backer comes in and uh, just suddenly the increased frame data of hey I'm in Byleth's face, all you have is Nair and down tilt and granted that's yeah, very good. Yeah, but uh, I mean also we're really seeing how Kirby it's a very bait and punish style the way he's jumping, landing on the ground without necessarily doing anything, hoping to find his opponent extending when he really shouldn't be, and that seems to be what's working. Yeah, he's trying to find another one of these anti lines. I want ooh, a very, oh. very solid side beat coming out there from Mailman. Was trying to really cover all of that space that Kirby can occupy. Oh, interesting use of the double jump there, but finds the turnaround grab and intent instead looking to set up on these platforms. And I love how just Goober's been playing such a very, very tense game, abusing the fact that Violet's ground speed uh, is slower than Kirby's here, so they're able to find so much on just Kirby's little dash dance game, which is not something I initially expected to say. <laughs> that being said, I feel like Mailman has started adjusting to the space he needs to be operating in. For sure. We're not really seeing Goober get these just bursting in and getting huge options. And instead, he's at that perfect range where you know he can still get burst options of his own, and he's just walling out with forward air. Mm. Yeah, not going to go for up throw. Doesn't really kill, honestly. I'd almost like to see more forward airs come out from Mailman. Like, they've been prepping. Their spacing has been primarily on focus on down tilt and forward tilt, when sometimes you just really need the short hop fares to cover a lot of space. Oh, what a reversal. It's not going to kill because the angle is sent straight towards the corner, but... That's good DI. That's going to do it. Yeah. I didn't think that was the strong hit, but it must have been the latest part of that strong hit in order to kind of come into play there as Man's out here counterpicking Kirby in Loser's Top 6. and it working. It worked well. Like, yeah. it worked early, That's... and then it kept working. It upset Now, me. granted, <laughs> granted, uh, he started out with a big combo. That meant that he had the lead, and from that point, he always had the lead. Now, hypothetically, oh, that was the kill that we could get a no, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See that I think you were correct to just grab, punch the re-grab with a uh, forward yeah, tilt. Yeah, so you get a back air tilt. here, and then grab ledge once. Yes, yeah, side B stall, and oh my god, the space. Yeah. Well, okay, so what happened is like after he gets hit, he like shrinks back down. It's like, you know how a lot of characters, when they get hit with a hurtbox extension, you like see them almost like teleport into their hit, their right. hit lag animation? Um, it's kind of what happens with Byleth when he gets caught at the ledge, I guess. Um, but anyway, good stuff. But at the same time, as we move into game two, what's it going to look like if he's the one who has to approach? Well, like, really demanding. To before it. even stage man should have been uh, picked, Mailman, like, frame one, be like, are you staying Kirby? Because if, you, if the answer is yes, 
The, um, well, don't you pick stage before character? I mean, you shouldn't, but... <laughs> the... Are you saying you should mind game him into not knowing the rules? I mean, he got rid of literally the two stages where Kirby can't do forward throw. Okay, so it implies that he is staying Kirby at this point, which is good, I guess. I mean, also, does he unlink like those stages? It's like a difference, right? If you bait your opponent into picking something like Kalos, you can go to Toon Link and you can start trying to do this really the, the floaty zoning game that you were at before. But you would have also have thought that Town and City is a decent stage for that, and the Kirby worked so much better. Granted, yeah. Town and City is much flatter. Kirby tends to enjoy I, that. I feel like that flatter stage was really what gave him the advantage for Town and City. There was a little bit of stuff at the platforms where he like got an up throw, but the up throw didn't even kill when he needed it to no. in that situation. Yeah. yeah. The it's, it's tough to really kind of articulate, but I really want to try and I really want to not only see this Kirby for game two, it makes a lot more sense. You go to Hollow Bastion here, you still have those FD blast sense that you're available. Play play it out. Play this Byleth in a very like heavy spacing, almost a uh, as is Kirby's main weakness. Like you gotta play an almost like timeout kind of Byleth here, like wall out. Uh, wall out Goober with these fares. He's been jumping a lot. Uh, again, already trying to prep this kind of zoning game, but that instant dash attack kind of left them really open to just this early scramble. I like the idea of using ooh, okay, uh, of using tilts more, a uh, bilus tilts rather. Things like up tilt, like forward tilt. Right. They seem to be much more reliable than jumping into the air because there have been times where Mailman's been caught by a rising back air or rising neutral air. So maybe staying grounded might also be a good play here. Well, remains to be seen. Okay, solid combo, but only 37%. Kind of middling when it feels like mail, uh, Mailman takes like 40, 50 each time he loses neutral. You know, getting these tech chases is great and all, but you need to find finishers like that. And these down tilt up airs, at the very least, those have been automatic, which is honestly quite huge. I like that jab one, though. Jab one, retreating fair. Try and just really make Goober feel bad about being in the corner. No, ooh, but going super far on stage and now has to eat a ledge trap in ooh. turn. Okay, this is something we actually saw earlier in Now Man's set against Maniac. DI. A little bit um, avant-garde at times. Looking for the up. Oh, very clean stuff. It's pressuring with that up air and, think and getting Mailman to finally commit to drifting back to stage from that jump and uh, covering yourself with a, a surprisingly large forward air. Kirby, Kirby's weaknesses are his stats and not his frame data because that up tilt is going to set up for a combo of his own. Yeah, there it is. But 39%, it's not nothing, but I, I feel like with a stock lead, it's there's a completely different way that you can play. You know, when you have a yeah. stock lead, your opponent needs to think about their kill options, which means that you are able to much more reliably play around those. And now that we're at these lower percents, instead we're seeing Mailman go for, he has more freedom in what to choose, things like that upbeat. So how is this wall out potential? Oh my god, not the tipper though, so. He's totally fine and living, but 90% for how long? Ooh, my Again, cool. like a big overextension there with that Nair, like trying just to really hard commit and hard act on a potential read or follow-up that they may have seen. And they're kind of letting Goober slide on by, even with just a roll on like that. I think he's expecting him to be jumping out of the corner. It kind of makes sense. You know, Kirby with so many jumps doesn't necessarily mind taking to the air, but Goober has shown he's wants to be staying grounded as much as possible. Okay. So he that that rising neutral air to cover it is just not really the the play or the call for so like, Goober's habits. It feels like the trick is, oh, you know, Bagot's tap is crazy. But I feel like the trick is always going to be like, you think of Kirby and you think like, oh, he's got some pretty good aerials, like that like back air, forward air. These things are really good. But where Kirby really shines is because his tilts are so flexible and so usable at just quick interruptions, combo startups, or uh, or potential follow-ups, with the, even with uh, kills with that forward tilt. Like It is such a good poke. And those are the key parts of Kirby's game plan because his aerials are really great at comboing when you find them, but he doesn't have the airspeed to make your opponent feel that pressure unless they're already set up in the corner, like what you do with your ground game. 
And it feels like Mailman is kind of prioritizing the wrong things when heading into this Kirby matchup. I do see we're starting to see a lot more down tilts. And one of the sort of habits that Mailman has is, you know, he'll shield an opponent, and it's kind of at that range where it becomes a mix-up in terms of what he's going to do, and he opts for this, like, down tilt when the opponent tries to close that distance. Uh, and that's something that if Goober catches on to, Kirby can punish pretty well. Getting a really awkward position there, but a again, another huge commitment trying to use Bygoat's quick tether to kind of get back to stage quickly. But instead, we find ourselves back at neutral, and Goober just kind of sitting and dashing back and forth, gets caught by the side B. <laughs> very, very careful. I mean, the movement's on point. These tether cancels are alive and well, but again, very, very hard committal with some of these options out of the corner, and you get blown up for them every time. I mean, I will say that that was also great reading from Goober. Notice how far you have to jump in order to avoid that side B. He knew oh, yeah. exactly what was coming, and he put himself at the maximum range uh, just in order to drop down and actually get it. Like, he's spacing, he's based around not only that down tilt, like, think about the coverage here as yeah. we as we reset this video. We get to watch it play out, ooh, doo, doo, sets him up in the corner, and now here, you're thinking, okay, both of us are jumping, this could be in fair range. So trying to weave back to here makes a lot of sense. He's wrong, it's actually a empty land down tilt, but by weaving back into right near closer to the platform, you space around the down tilt. You're prepped in a really solid position. This up air here catches roll. The, again, down tilt comes out, So, but you're safe from that. You're covering options and you're forcing Mailman to get to feel bad and to feel the pressure of being in the corner at a high percent. He can't make a mistake. So, offensive. He goes offensive. He sees Kirby's slow speed and yeah. tries to counter it. Well, it's not only that. That upper that you said it catches rolls, it was actually the bait for the for the side beat. Very true. That, like, that's another thing about Kirby is that he has these very quick areas. Also, the, the palette swap, I like it. Blend into the background more. Um, the camouflage. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, but that's like a big part of Kirby is you throw out these moves that your opponent says, oh, he threw out a move. I want to, like, at that range, if... Up here was a little bit slower, absolutely that side B would have landed, but it was just quick enough that he jumped out of range with the back air as well. So, as we move into this next game, this is possibly the last game for Mailman in the entire tournament. Ooh, he has to be thinking about what is actually punishable from Kirby. You know, and it's hard, you know, matchup inexperience will definitely matter quite a bit, it's but... It's really what it seems like a lot. Yeah. On, on top of a well-played Kirby on the part of Goober to kind of exploit said matchup and experience, like, do you know Kirby's auto-cancel windows, like with that up air? Do you know the, the surprising amount of range on Kirby's big feet? Like, it's a... It feels like Mailman is playing... He's forcing Mailman to play at the wrong spacings, because of those quick baits, because of those well-timed aerials to try and sprinkle in the fact that like, you think you're safe for long periods of time, and then I get you with a punish, and then I reset neutral in a way that you weren't ready for. Oh, that's a, another time in the corner tries to get out with it and up smashed. That time dying really early in a... I want to know what these side bees are meaning for like what are the yeah, intention I behind I, it? I, when we go back and look at it my money is he is jumping at a range where he's like oh this move is huge i can catch a jumping kirby but kirby has multiple jumps and he has the ability to just get outside of that range so quickly right there though he was on the ground right yeah he was he was holding shield in fact so like if you see your point like these are where you really want to prep the the violet distance demon type of gameplay like forward air back air uh, forward tilt. Like, these are the moves that establish that space and make you want to get in and pressure by with really up close, which then leads into the nares and the uppies that are so potent on follow-up. Like, finally, a kind of mailman getting into a gr getting into a rhythm with this, uh, with the game plan that Byleth can excel in, but still, extremely even and a huge risk out of the corner again. 
Oh, and we're actually seeing the smash attacks this time around. No more wimpy little punishes. No, if he sees the opportunity for a kill, Goober is going to absolutely swing for the fences. And it's working out fantastically for him. 102%, but he is an entire stock advantage here. That was oh, nice. That was really that good. Was really nice. And that's actually really interesting because trumping is kind of relatively weak in this game because your opponent has so much flexibility with where they go after you trump yeah, them. You but that by lift up B, it actually covers a lot of that space, it looks like. Yeah, you, your opponent has to be buffering an option early or else by lift up B can hit all, all those BIs. Ooh, okay, getting the footstool instead there, putting a couple rolls, couple, a couple dangerous positions, finally grab there and into a back air as well. Huge damage for Mailman. Have to take a big advantage of the situation out of the space in order for forward smash to hit. Oh, just not respecting some of Goober's space as they find the roll there. A great parry. Another roll out of the corner immediately. The panic options are just he's, really he's, starting to be de like deconstructed. He's almost overcorrecting for some of the ways he's lost stocks earlier. Like, okay, time to just wall out with back airs excessively. Throw out five of them. Oh, I've got hit for being aggressive in the corner. Time to just roll out of there. Well, like, to be fair, I feel like in those situations, if he had gone for side B, he would have died. So maybe roll Correct. out of the corner is slightly better it, it's than like, for side B. <laughs> like, yes, you're not wrong. But it's, it comes with the fact of, like, everything is... Things are good in fighting games because everything is in moderation. Like, you're never just hard committing to one button or else eventually your opponent will find a way around it. But it feels like Mailman like will have these sprinklings of, that was great. You pressured with back air. Kirby wasn't able to crouch it because your spacing is correctly. Uh, and you're doing it what Violet ought to be doing and pressuring in these corners, threatening things like forward tilt and back air and forward air, and then you hit him with a surprise ledge from up B. You hit him with a surprise like up B, a nair out of shield and a dash attack. Like you get the fair into jump call out fair. But then it's sprinkled with the, but what if I side B out of the corner while you're blocking? It's like you, moderation. Everything needs to exist in moderation and you have the ability to take your time because Kirby is so slow. Yeah. I do like the pick of town and city here, though. It feels like Goober's entire game plan is oh, is built on how well can I keep you in the corner and how well can I make you panic. I mean, he won in the, on game on, two on this stage, also. Yes, and like how well can I keep you in the corner and how much reward can I get off of my ledge trapping and my potential edge guarding? And town and city rewards that heavily. <gasps> Ooh, oh, oh wait, wait a minute! This is the combo you're going for. That was so. That was so clean! How much damage was that? It's quite a bit, it felt like. And can you And clean? he was DIing in because he was expecting a smash attack. Clean, 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 clean. Recognition and understanding that nothing kills here. Might as well go for the max damage. Oh, and the forward tilt catching the air dodge down angled forward tilt comes in for the game for the first stock sealed. Oh, and now you gotta get down. And he doesn't. He does not do that. <laughs> Tricky. Uh, it's hard to get by given the the little bit of patience that Mailman showed there. Oh, up air out. Yeah. <laughs> so, like that's that's tricky, right? And, and Kirby's got some deceptively strong frame data, and if you're able to combine combo two of those up airs, the damage is quite large. And the damage quite large in general. Look at this setup. I feel like that down tilt could have been down smash. Oh. All right, better DI that time around. Mailman not quite dropping to the dash attack, but the forward smash, it was the weak part of it, though. He's surviving, but how, for how long? Oh, yeah, she caught that roll, but he didn't punish in time. And now, finally, Mailman with a bit of stage. Let's see what he can do with it. The first time we've seen him out of the corner, possibly with any kind of opening, but it's the dash attack. The fact that Goober is at lower percents means he can go for those sorts of things less riskily. And those Town and City platforms actually really helping Goober. That up, uh, up throw would not have killed without that. Getting an up tilt combo as well. Uh, just Mailman letting uh, letting Goober into this space, not being as in, uh, you have no invincibility. Oh, I wanted I wanted him to hold down. Spike. I wanted him to hold down. <laughs> Instead, just being careful, not trying to risk anything too hard. You are Kirby, and you're extraordinarily light, but you oh. Oh, almost finding a just super nair. cheeky Please, nair just nair. Oh my God, <laughs> the character has no hitbox. Going up, just nair. Oh my god, everyone talks about how good 
by with Nair. It's just drop off Legend Nair. Why are you going for down air? That move takes years, decades, <laughs> eons. <laughs> Cut it out. He died because he Nair. Hold to be that. Fair, Devin. <laughs> no, like Nair for the edge guard. I know, I know. God, <laughs> son of a God. <laughs> well, because here's the thing. When you miss a neutral air, you're like, oh, I Bro. missed the neutral air. But when you hit the down air, your brain just sends out all of the endorphins and the neurotransmitters. <laughs> that, that's why you go for the down air. Doesn't matter I if just, the neutral air kills. The neutral air kills. Okay. I feel like, okay. Let me, just, let me just look at this. Like, you are walling out right here. This is the intent. This is the intent, right? You throw out this fair. Fair is hitting right here. It's like, if you jump, also Sonic Unleashed. Very nice. Um... If you're hitting this space, you're just like, okay, don't jump out of shield, which means you have the chance to throw out a second forward air and hit block here. I think he's a little bit too late, but it's still the threat is all the same. This should be forward tilt. Like, you're landing with a move. This should be forward tilt. Keep Kirby in shield. Instead, he, like, dashes back. He, like, doesn't fill that space. I feel like what he was scared of is dash attack right there. He's in shield. But he was he was catching landings a lot with dash attack, and then uh, I think that one thing that he had been doing there also a lot is the down tilt, which yeah, equ yeah. equally as strong, right? You're trying to force Kirby to feel bad, feel slow, like feel like a small helpless puffball. I, I and think instead they would they were like overcommit and it's like maybe you're jumping to the platform here and I get this like really hard read and it goes crazy. Well, I will say though that in in the defense of that specific play, what option did Kirby pick? He jumped backwards to the platform. That's still him in the corner. Arguably even less options than him being on the uh, on the ground. So that fadeback, the worst thing that you want in that situation is for him to get behind you to really close that distance, and that fadeback does.